Hey Canucks fans, would Tyler Myers be an effective option on the Canucks first power play unit? I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, August the 16th. I want to give a thank you and a shout out to Darren Walsh of Walsh Pavers for sponsoring this video. As always, you can find the link to his website down below in the description. Okay, Tyler Myers, Canucks first power play unit. I was inspired by, or yeah, motivated and inspired by an article that I read by Daniel Wagner of Pass It to Bullis. And he posted this article, I think it was yesterday. It was weird, I had actually had, I actually had a dream about Daniel last night. Not a weird dream, but I, I think it was because I knew that I was gonna talk about this today. Anyways, that's, that's for another vlog. But Daniel talked about the fact that he thinks that Tyler Myers could be a good option, a viable option on the Canucks power play unit, and not just the second power play unit, but the first power play unit overall. And he cited some stats, I, I won't recite them because I can't remember all of them, but um, I'll link to his article down below. But check it out, it's a really, really good read. It's, a, it's, it's not too stats heavy, but there's enough there where you can see that over the past two seasons, Tyler Myers actually, one stat that he's leading the league of all defensemen is primary assists on the power play. So that would mean the first assist, whether that's a shot or whether that's a, a, a pass for a one-timer or yeah, or like I said, a shot that creates a rebound, a pass that uh, creates a one-timer or whatever it may be, or, or simply the last guy to touch the puck before the, the goal scorer. He is leading the league in that stat in primary assists over 60 minutes. And he's ahead of guys like Victor Hedman of the Tampa Bay Lightning, ahead of guys like Tory Krug of the Boston Bruins and John Carlson of the Washington Capitals. So Krug, Carlson, and Hedman, three really strong offensive defensemen, guys who see a lot of power play time, and Tyler Myers leads all of them, like I said, in primary assists per 60 minutes over the past two seasons. So that's some pretty lofty company there. So it, basically, Daniel Wagner, he explores the option of having Tyler Myers on the first power play unit. And he's make, we know he's making $5 million, sorry, $6 million for the next five seasons. So we wanna get a good return on our, on our investment. You know, we're talking about, is he a first line guy with Edler, maybe a second line guy with Hughes. I think he's too expensive to be a, a third line guy with Jordy Ben, but we'll see how the D pairings shape up. But I think we've always had this notion in mind that it's gonna be Alex Edler, likely the incumbent on the first power play unit. And then Quinn Hughes eventually will supplant him on that first power play unit. And then whoever it's not, Hughes or, or Edler, then that guy goes on the second power play unit. Or, do you put Tyler Myers up on the first power play unit? Uh, a bit of a different look. He's a right shot as opposed to a left shot like Edler and Hughes. And whether that's a, a change in alignment and formation or a change in philosophy, whatever it may be, Tyler Myers has a good shot, a better shot than Hughes or Edler. He's got you know a decent uh, skating for a guy his size. And obviously with a power play, the whole point is you have one more guy than the, than the opposition. You can try different things. You can try different alignments different formations, different rotations, and different strategies, whatever it may be. We know that the power play will likely have Horvat, Besser, and Pedersen. The, then is it JT Miller um, inserted there? Is it Michael Furlan? So a uh, different look up, up top for sure in the front uh, if you have the big three of, of Horvat, Pes uh, I always say Pesser. Horvat, Pedersen, and Besser, and then maybe it's JT Miller. I know Godobin was in there a little bit last year, Sven Berchi before he got hurt, but maybe it's JT Miller in there. And then what would you do? Who would you put up on the blue line for the first unit? Like I said, Daniel Wagner argues it could be Tyler Myers based on his, his lofty stat of most primary assists over 60 minutes in the past two seasons. So does he deserve a look on the first power play unit? Of course, things are gonna change throughout the season, especially if the power play kind of you know, sputters coming out of the gate. So we're gonna see different guys up there. There's gonna be injuries, there's gonna be matchups, everything. And if you don't get on the first power play unit, maybe you get on the second power play unit. We're likely that first power play unit's gonna be four forwards and one D-man, but does the second unit also take a four forward, one D-man formation, or might it be three forwards and two D-man? And then I think it's obvious that you're rotating between Edler, Hughes, and Myers as your three D-man over the two power play units. So just some food for thought. It's a really good article. Um, you know, good enough that I, I dreamt about it last night. So check it out. It's down below. Daniel Wagner, pass it to Bullis, arguing that maybe Tyler Myers should play on the first power play unit ahead of Quinn Hughes 
and ahead of Alex Edler. Canucks fans, what do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to get some, uh, you know, get some discussion going around this topic. I think it's a nice problem to have. You know, at the start of last season, Alex Edler was probably our only option on the first power play unit. Now we have three, technically, uh, three bona fide options in Edler, Quinn Hughes, and Tyler Myers. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. Who do you want to see on the first power play unit? And then who do you want to see on the second power play unit when it comes to D-men? You can talk about the forwards too, but I'm really interested in the D-men for this video. Leave a comment. I'd love to read, react, reply. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Have a great day. God bless and go Canesco.